Apple and Google said this month they were teaming up to make it possible for iPhones and Android phones to alert their owners if they think they've been in close proximity with someone who later tested positive for COVID-19. It's called contact tracing, and for the two tech companies it's become a bit of a controversial endeavour. Both firms insist that privacy is preserved and no personal information ever leaves an individual's phone, but critics question the privacy concerns and also whether the tech will even work effectively at all. Here's how Apple and Google say it should work. Let's say there are two individuals standing in line at a grocery store. We'll call them Taylor and Meredith. They've never met before and they never speak while they're in the store. While they're in there, Taylor's iPhone generates a string of random letters and numbers called an identifier. Meredith's Android phone generates one too. The Bluetooth chips in each of their phones can tell if they come in close proximity with each other without needing internet or GPS or Wi-Fi or anything that could transfer personal information. It's a little bit like when you buy a new pair of wireless headphones and you turn your phone on and you turn the headphones on and they can at least see each other. So Meredith and Taylor's Bluetooth chips have detected each other and exchanged their random identifiers. A few minutes later, both devices generate brand new identifiers and their owners leave the store still having never spoken. Those identifiers stay on their phones for now, so not only are they nonsensical strings of digits, they're also only stored locally. But let's say a few days later, Meredith is positively tested for COVID-19. She downloads her local government's public health authority app and tells it about the diagnosis in order to get the latest medical advice. What Apple and Google are creating is a way for that app, and specifically only that app, to also ask Meredith's permission to give a contact tracing server the random identifier numbers that her phone's generated over the past few days. Just those numbers, that's it. So Meredith agrees. The next day, Taylor's at home eating the food she bought from the grocery store. That moment, Taylor's phone detects that there's an identifier on the server that matches one it's seen before in person. A bit like watching a televised lottery result, where the random numbers drawn on screen match the ones in a person's hand on their ticket, hopefully. The numbers mean nothing in and of themselves, of course, but because there's a match, that means something specific. Taylor's phone has at some point recently been near a person who's tested positive for COVID-19. If Taylor also has the Public Health Authority's app, her phone can tell the app a match has occurred, and then the app can alert her and offer the latest medical advice. The app never sees the random identifier that the phone's matched, it just knows that a match has been found. And this is why Apple and Google needed to work together. iOS and Android jointly run almost every smartphone on the planet, but they're rival systems and they speak completely different languages. Critics say this system can only be effective if enough people opt in to use it and are widely tested for the virus as well. Another criticism is that in order to receive a notification of a possible match, users need to download a specific public health app, likely one that their government has endorsed. Well, what if you don't trust your government? And what if you don't trust Apple or Google? They're two of the biggest companies in the world and already control huge amounts of our personal data. Critics ask, do we want to give them more responsibility? Apple and Google's partnering on contact tracing is their answer to the question, can the smartphone revolution now be used to help control a global pandemic? The answer may be yes, but it'll be up to each of us to choose whether we opt into the contact tracing system in order to find out. For Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson.